is now being recorded. Thank you, Council. And thank you, yeah, Council Clerk. Uh, Councilman Ferguson, would you do the invocation, please? Good evening, everyone. Father God, we just give you the glory and the honor, and we thank you for another day that we have never seen before. We thank you for your protection, your guidance, your love, your goodness, and your mercy. We ask for your direction, your wisdom, and your guidance in this meeting. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Madam Clerk, do the roll call, please. Councilwoman Jones? Here. Councilman Harry? Here. Councilman Harrison? Here. Council, Councilwoman Guillaume? Here. Councilwoman Fareed? Here. Vice President Ferguson? Here. President Curtis? Here. Robert Quorum? Okay. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Moved by Ms. Guillaume. Second? Second. Second by Ms. Jones. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Um, Councilman? Yeah, there's a couple of pieces of legislation. A couple of pieces of legislation that I wanted to discuss tonight that we looked at previously because I wanted to, um, had a good chance to look it over. So I wanted to add them to the agenda. Um, and what were those? Here's R34, uh, a resolution to establish charter review process, and R35, a resolution to promote financial literacy. Okay. Any other discussion? Council, oh, Council Fareed, is that your hand? Yes, I would like to add um, two topics of discussion. One, um, post-meeting actions, and a second, um, citizen engagement. Post-meeting actions and, and citizen engagement. All right, any other discussion? Okay, uh, the vote is to pass the uh, current agenda with four additions, R34, R35, uh, post-meeting activities and citizens engagement. Uh, Madam Clerk. This is to vote for the agenda. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Councilman Harry. Yes. Councilman Harrison. Yes. Councilwoman Guillaume. Yes. Councilwoman Fareed. Yes. Vice President Ferguson. Yes. President Curtis. Yes. We have seven. This is passed. Okay. Um, so in the uh, agenda, just for the council's uh, awareness that we have work session May 2nd minutes, regular session May 9th minutes, and public hearing May 17th minutes ready for your review that we'll be uh, voting on at the regular session at the end of this month. So, uh, topics of discussion. First up is NA and AA meetings, uh, Councilman Hairston. Yes, I had um, recently talked to a citizen about um, the NA and the AA meetings. Um, they were saying that they've been calling up um, to the gold room, I guess. Somebody told them that the gold room was going through 
some maintenance or something like that. And he couldn't, um, they, they weren't able to access it to have any meetings. And I believe that we had a, a discussion about this before, um, but they were open to using the nutrition center. And I believe it's a program that we had before we was all council members, um, council one, um, councilman Heron and councilwoman Jones probably and, and Ms. Ferguson, councilman Ferguson probably familiar with it. But they basically just want to see if they can um, have their meetings again in the nutrition center. Okay. Um, Councilman Gill. I just want to say that I believe I heard this particular topic about AA and NA meetings more than once. And I, I they need a space to meet and I am in support of them meeting in the nutrition center. I don't know what the delay or hiccup is, but it's been something that the city has been doing for a while as far as providing space. And I would, you know, encourage us to, to help. Okay. Um, I believe the days is like a Tuesday night and I believe a Wednesday night. Um, I asked, uh, Council, um, Council Maharan to verify that for me. I don't have my book with me actually to look at the days that he said that he had down, but I think they met on like Tuesdays and Wednesdays. If I'm, if I'm accurate, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's Tuesday, Thursdays. Tuesday, Thursday. It's Tuesday, Thursdays. Thursday. I think they, okay. I think they might have had one in my, my middle Mondays. I think Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Okay. Before I go to Miss Barbara, I, uh, Ms. Uh, Councilman Jones. Uh, I, I thought they met three nights a week. Yeah, I think Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Okay. Now, if if I have no issue with them being in the nutrition center, but we need to determine uh, what, how are we going to, how is the nutrition center going to be, uh, is it going to be uh, added under the, if we're going to use, are we going to use it as a community where the community, whereas AANA, the, the housing authority, uh, I'm sorry, not the housing, yeah, the housing authority is one, and then the um, HOAs were using it and the Civic Association was using it as a meeting place. So are we going to establish that and then it'd be under the um, the, the gold room uh, manager to uh, uh, do all the uh, scheduling and, and, and the gold room uh, persons to do the um, cleaning and, and making sure that it's set up for those persons? How are we, if we're going to use the nutrition center again for this, how are we going to uh, establish an administrative uh, portion for the, for the nutrition center? Because they'll have to call somebody, they'll have to let somebody know, you know, that they're in the building, um, that, that, that they're meeting so that it'll be structured once again. So I don't necessarily have an answer to that. I don't know if Councilman Heron or uh, Council President Derek Curtis got an um, answer for that. I don't necessarily have an answer for it. I just want to, if we're going to give them a place outside where they can drink with all these liquor stores, I believe we can give them a place where they can come and meet to get off of it. That's just, this is my battle. Uh, Mr. President, ma'am. Councilman Heron. Yeah, okay. So they meet Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And normally what the, the way it normally was scheduled was the administrative assistant handled the scheduling of that room down there. But uh, a person from the goal room would open and close it. That's normally the way it would work. And that was that was for all the groups. So and normally and that's why that's why the NA and A met upstairs because it would conflict with on certain nights with the um, uh, HOAs and the um, Civic Association meeting on a, on a Wednesday. So that's why they were meeting in the goal room, and that's why we gave them space in the goal room so we wouldn't have wouldn't have these scheduling conflicts. Because the Civic Association has been meeting in a nutrition center for 40, 50 years, you know, or however long it's been there, 30 years. Um, so um, that's the way it normally works. The administrative assistant keeps the scheduling and um, the, um, the um, go room crew will open and close it. They get the hours in. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ferguson, Councilman Ferguson. Yeah, um, yeah, my concern was um, the schedule as well because now the Civic Association just, I think they meet on the third Wednesday, um, one Wednesday a month. 
But um, eventually when we come back in, the, the council meet two Mondays. And if, if they're meeting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so, and then, um, and then we have a, the second Tuesday. So where are they gonna, uh, I remember at one time they had sent them to the um, Woodmore Glen Arden um, to meet when we had a meeting. So I don't, I'm, we definitely will have to um, have somebody keep a schedule because um, we cannot have them, once we come back in person, we can't have them meeting on Monday and we have a meeting because um, a lot of times when, when the people are in person, they, they uh, sit all the way even back into the nutritional center. So that's gonna be a conflict. So um, someone definitely has to, gonna have to be responsible for um, keeping the schedule for, for them. And not only them, but when the civic association come back and also the um, HOAs. Okay. Uh, Ms. Bobber, do you have an insight into just um, you know, them calling up to the city looking for space? Sure, I've been in touch with two individuals from um, NA and um, AA, Mr. Bernard Hammack L and another gentleman, I forget his name, I apologize. Um, but I had told him that, um, you know, the nutrition center would most likely be available. And what I was just waiting on was to get some clarity from the council, um, whether or not you all wanted to have them coming back into the building. Um, since we were just now opening up the building, they meet on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday is at 7 p.m. Thursdays are at 8 p.m. And the only um, hiccup really is previously, I think there was a, a gentleman, I think his name was Taj, that let them in the building previously um, from the Gold Room crew member. And since we're down crew members right now, we're augmenting the um, staff with public works um, individuals who are working the events as well as some council members. And so the question was, is who would let them into the building? Um, and where, where would those costs, those associated costs be charged to? Because the nutrition center does not have a line item associated with it. Um, if they're being charged to the gold room, then, um, you know, that's a question, um, that I know the treasurer might have some concern about if it's being charged to the gold room as an enterprise. Um, but if there was a council member or someone who was sponsoring them, I had indicated, you know, that might be the best case if a council member could let them in, then it wouldn't be any other costs associated with it. But um, that's entirely up to you all. Other question, the, um, the, the community center at Woodmore, isn't there a lockbox that people can let themselves in? There is, is that it? I, there is not. Oh, okay. I don't I'm, think so. I, as far as I know, there's a key. Yeah, those are. Oh, keys. okay. Okay. Sorry, got confused there. I apologize. <laughs> um. Well, I, I think there are several questions raised here. You have the what the NAAA Civic Associations, and just the how we navigate that from the gold room to the nutrition center to the cost with someone being there on site to let them in, to lock up. I mean, it sounds like there's multiple components uh, to this, uh, but the, with the end goal of making sure that um, we're providing space for uh, community events that's very helpful to our citizens. Um, so, Ms. Bobber, if, if you and um, Ms. Jessica can uh, come up with a plan, uh, connect with, I'm sorry, who, what civic associations are, are wanting to come back? Have, have any civic associations reached out to you guys? No. Um, or is this only, just historic? Um, there's only one group that had reached out to us and I think Councilman Herring is a member of them. Yeah, the Glenn Woods Neighborhood Association. Yeah. And, I, and I think that the Civic Association actually reached out, but they were told that they, they couldn't come into the building or something like that. 
a while back before you got him, uh, Miss Bond. Oh, okay. But before you got him, yeah. I can check with, with them. So, you know, Ms. Roberts, you can take the lead on that, just saying, you know, basically who wants to come? Uh, what does it look like across the community spaces that we have? Um, and come up with the, uh, you know, I guess that matrix and then provide it to the council so that we could see what we want to do. Because, I mean, at this point, you know, we do have meetings on Tuesdays uh, in the Trisha Center. It's part of the council chambers. If you open it up, uh, we could very well have a meeting on a Wednesday or Thursday. So it's, it's more involved. Uh, but any ideas on how we could um, move forward in the meantime with NANA? Um, you know, I, I... Not really sure. I guess they could meet in the building in the meantime while you all are not meeting and on recess. Um, and then evaluate whether or not you wanted to have them back up in the gold room. Um, I think there was a, con a little consensus, not a total consensus, to have them in the nutrition center um, and to maybe redo. They had a contract when they were in the gold room. But we couldn't find a copy of that contract. I believe Mr. Hammock L said he had a copy of that contract um, because they were paying a minimal fee to use the gold room. And he did indicate that they would be willing to pay a, a nominal fee collected from their dues. Um, you know, if you all wanted to charge them something to be in the gold room. How long are the meetings? Just two hours or is it? No, they're one hour. I think one hour. Oh. And, and, and how close are we to staffing the? Uh... Not very close. We, we, I think we haven't gotten a um, qualified candidate yet or qualified candidates yet. And we're exhausting all re recruiting platforms that we can at this point. Okay. But I can take the lead on this and get a matrix back to you all. Um, would you like to have that by next week? I personally yeah. would like to have yep. it sooner than later. Honestly, mm -hmm. they need to start meeting. They need to come back in person. Okay. Can you have by the end of this week? Yes. OK. All right, thank you. You can send it out to email it to the council members. Um, and then we can maybe, I don't know, designate someone that can be there to open up the nutrition center at the appropriate time, so. All right. Councilman Harrison, is there anything else? Yes, so thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilman Jones, I don't know if you were raising your hand or. Uh, yeah, for one quickie. Um, I, I, has the um, nutrition center been sanitized since the last event? And I see that all of, the, when I was down there last week, I can see that all of that um, stuff that was taken out of the nutrition center is still piled up in the council chamber. Um, no, it's it's been clean, Mr. Um, Taylor shampooed the floor, um, but it has not been sanitized, sanitized per se by a professional to have it be sanitized. Is that something that you all would want us to do prior to their entering into the building? I think the room should be cleaned. It, it should be cleaned up. Anything in there that's not necessarily a usable should either be determined whether it's junk and put into the, 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 the uh, dumpster or determine whether the city, the city can put it on their surplus list to be sold uh, and, and get the room cleaned up. The window seals in there, that they need to be, um, you know, it just needs a thorough cleaning where somebody comes in and just cleans everything. Not, when they Before they even shampoo the rug again, I would have cleaned all those window seals out. 
you know, and then determine, you know, what stays and what goes. Yes, ma'am. Councilman Freed. Yes, I just wanted to um, ask a question to Ms. Barber. You said they're not sanitizing it, but I think the public works report says that they're sanitizing the municipal building twice a day. Is that only certain areas of the municipal building? Yeah, they don't do a deep clean in the nutrition center. Um, they do sanitize the rest of the building that's used um, more frequently. But as far as a deep cleaning um, in the entire nutrition center, I'm not sure that that is being done. So sanitizing, just spraying the door handles, is that, is that what you determine as sanitizing? No, they do more than spraying the door handles. Um, I would have to get with Mr. Um, Taylor on the specifics of what they do. Um, they do, you know, all the restrooms twice a day. They do all the handles and all that kind of stuff with the high touch areas and things like that. But I can get a more clear picture for you all um, tomorrow and let you know exactly what that means and how or if the nutrition center is being included in that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, next is Lanes, uh, Councilman Harrison. Okay. So with this one, this one, this is another um, you know citizen concern down on Barlow Road. They were suggesting um, a lane because they was informing me that when they driving down, <clears throat> they be getting ran off the road. I'm not sure if you know you guys are familiar with Barlow Road and it's just like one lane. I mean, it's just an open street. So um, I'm just bringing that to you guys' attention and it's just open for discussion. I just bring that to you, you know, to y'all attention. See what you think. Um, Mr. Just, uh, President Mayor. Yes. Councilman Harrison, I mean, so, Councilman Harrison, sorry. So, um, Councilman Harrison, are you, so are you suggesting, uh, what, striping? Striping, yeah. Uh, well, okay. I'm not suggesting striping. I'm, yeah, I'm just asking you guys, what, it, what, what would you think? Like, what you think it would look like? I'm not sure if it's <clears throat> something feasible or not. It was just a concern, so I was just bringing it to you. So uh, you're not suggesting striping? No, nah, I'm not really suggesting that. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm, this is open. Okay, so I mean, I, I mean, what's the what's the, what's the issue with that that it had? Now, when I ride down it, I just ride down it. I don't. I, there are no lines for me to stay on on either side of the road. On left or right? Yeah. So you're suggesting we put striping down there and striping at the front by the light. So when you say striping, you mean striping like that's on a regular street, like that one line straight down the center. Yeah, a center line or a yeah. line. Yeah, I'm talking mm -hmm. a center line, more so a center line and straight down. Oh, okay. Just just to separate both sides from left, like left and right. Hmm. How far down do they want it? All the way down to the end? <laughs> they didn't even really say. They just saying, man, they be running me off the road. I said, okay, well, let's go put a six foot stripe there and then be then they're satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> So you need, yeah, we need to find out what they want. I think they probably want it all the way down the middle, all the way down the middle to the end. I'm thinking. Because I don't think that's ever been, I think it might have been striped years ago when they first paved it. I think it had, might have had a white, I think it had a white stripe at the at the very, you know, where you stop for the red light. But I don't think, I don't think I've never seen it. I never, I never seen a stripe all the way down the street. Like I haven't, me in particular, I haven't. I think they, but if they, they cut it, not down the middle. No, it's never been. I don't ever remember one being down the middle. So, I mean, some, we got that, what you call it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Any other comments from council members? Ms. Barber, have you taken, um, can't you at the very least have, um, think? Well, now nah, I, I mean, I'll go take a look at it. That's fine. Um, I'll take a look at it. Can we have um, okay. a works look at it and see how much get a cost has been on running the stripe down that thing? Sure. All right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. 
Um, we, we may want to see if everybody, all the citizens, they actually want that strike too, right? Yeah. Because that was just one person that, that I spoke to. It's a public street. If we feel it's a safe street yeah, and we want to put a strike down, then we can put a strike down. Does it need to be repaved? I think parts of it may need to be. Yeah, we need to do that first before we put stripes. I knew you were going to say that, Councilman Jones. Yeah, but why waste money putting stripes <laughs> down something that you haven't, that you got holes in or you got, uh, you know, no, falling apart? No, I completely agree. All right. Um, next up is the, uh, I don't think we ever came to an agreement on this. Uh, uh, Ms. Barber, did you want to ex you know, expound on the good trash CPI adjustment for $16,000? Yes, so um, hopefully you'll recall that back in May, we received a notification from CGI Residential Incorporated or Good Trash um, Removal Service that they were requesting the CPI adjustment that is uh, set forth in the contract. Um, they were requesting a retroactive repayment of 3.8% for the May 1st, 2021 to April 30th, 2022 um, year. And that came to a total of $16,165.80. Um, this was in conjunction with the discussion about moving forward with the three month um, increased um, amount for the period of May, June, and July, um, but separate uh, at the same time. So hopefully that makes sense and I'll answer any other questions as you may have them. So essentially, do we wanna pay the $16,000? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Councilwoman Jones? It's a part of their contract. We have to pay it, I think. It is part of the contract. Yes, it is part of the contract. So that's something that we, you know, that the C agreed when they assigned the contract with them. So maybe that's something we need to look at with the next contract, if with whoever we decide um, to take on as the trash company, uh, if that uh, option is in there, but in their contract, that is in their contract. Mr. President, may I? Councilman Harry? Yeah, I guess my problem is that they go a full year giving us the wrong invoices. And I have a problem with that. I mean, every year they, they give us the wrong invoices, then they come at the end of the year, oh, you owe this extra money. At what point do they have to be held responsible for their shoddy accounting system or whatever they're using that they're not billing people adequately, you know, because we, we're paying them their, whatever they're sending us on time, you know, the full amount. You know, so, I mean, at some point, they got to be held responsible for what they're sending out to us. And, and I know it's in a contract and we're paying what, 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 what they, um, we're paying basically what their invoices because it's their responsibility to read the contract and know what they're supposed to send us and what they're not supposed to send us. So, I mean, this is, it seems like every year with them is always a balloon payment at the end of the year for some amount of money because they didn't do their invoices right. So, you know, we paying them almost a half a million dollars. You would think to be able to, figure that out, you know, uh, when they send out the invoices every year. Because they should be, if, if in, in, yeah, because I think it, it is in their contract something. My thing is, if you're a business, you should know what's in a contract and know that what you should be applying to the invoice for, um, you know, services rendered. So, and that's my feeling on that. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Councilman Heron. Councilman uh, Farid, did you mean to put your hand down? Okay. Yeah. Um, what what will happen if we don't pay them? I'm likely, I, I don't know, but they would likely either um, um, discontinue service and maybe even try and take us to court. Let's okay. send the contract. Yeah, I don't think we can not have garbage picked up in the city, especially as it's getting hotter. Now, I think I'm, with Councilman Jones in terms of like the RFP process, making sure that we understand completely the details that are going into the contract and what type of payments we will be expected to pay um, and whether or not there's going to be some sort of annual balloon payment. But I don't think that we can 
forego that payment at this point. Thank you, Councilman Freed. Um, so I agree, if it's in a contract, then we pay them, but we have the RFP out now um, and we can make sure that we carefully review uh, the contract. And if we want language in there saying that we don't want balloon payments at the end of the year, that that's the uh, responsibility of the company if they missed a billing, then we can, but at this point, just gotta pay. Well, I, excuse me, I'm sorry, Council President, but I don't think it's a balloon payment. I think it's uh, it's just the, what is it, the uh, CPI, cost price yeah. index that we're paying. It's not, it, it's it's in addition to what, you know, we paid for the, what is it, um, I, so many houses, I can't remember the number, 1925 or 1975. 1975. We paid for the 1975 houses, and then in the contract, it states that we pay us that we'll have to pay a CPI every year uh, as the, the cost of living goes up. They they're asking for this additional funds. So uh, I don't know what the end of year for them is. If it's the end of year is, is it June or is it the end of year December? But the payment has become due. So and like I said, um, and as Councilwoman Farid said. When we get a new contract or someone presents us with an, uh, the RFP that we're interested in, we need to see if we want, as a city, to pay a CPI to the trash companies. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, man. Yes, sir, Councilman Harry. Usually you, you affix the rate, the CPI rate either at the beginning of the contract or, you know, um, or at the beginning of the next contract, at the end of the year for the next contract, and it should be our year. Um, they could pick any CPI over the cost of a whole year. So what rate are they using? I mean, the CPI goes up and down all the time. You know, so. Yeah. Some, you know, I mean, you you, you you pick a rate and I can see if they did, okay, the CPI is at this rate at the beginning of the year. So you we agreed to this, but the CPI is this, so we're gonna fix this extra month, amount to your invoice every month because the CPI is at this rate. I can understand that. But then come to, to the end of the year and say, okay, well, the CPI is, which, 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 out of the whole year, which rate are you using? It fluctuates. Oh, that's why we need to determine in our contract with whoever we choose to be our trash provider that, you know, this is the CPI that we're going to go with. But this, it's not in that contract that they have now. Right now, it's just an open contract where they, they get a CPI uh, increase or amount of money every year. So we need to do better with our contract and, and putting together our contract. Like I said, usually okay. CPIs at the beginning of the contract, at the beginning of the year, the next contract year, you, you factor in the CPI. That's what takes it up a little bit more each year because the cost price index goes up or it could go down. So, all right. Okay. Thank you, council members. Uh, next on the agenda is Glenard and Apparel for Events, Councilman Jones. And I'm going to pass with this right now because of the fact we only have one vendor uh, for and this for this presentation. Uh, there was another vendor mentioned, and we don't have information pertaining to that. So I will get that information, and we'll have we will be back. This will be back on the uh, send it to all the council members to give them the, the two or three choices. Right now, we from what I understand, we have the one choice LL Bean. The other choice was going to be A1. And if there's another choice that I can come up with real quick so that we can get this out of the way, but we need uh, more than one choice. OK, uh, so we will table this topic of discussion until uh, further notice. There were only two other topics of discussion that was added. Um, post meeting actions, Councilwoman. Three. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to have a system for us to track what's coming out of these conversations. I'm, I'm noticing over the last year that we have conversations, we say we're going to follow up on items and then we just kind of keep revisiting them. Um, I think some of our ideas are great and the questions are good, but we're not having enough um, follow through and execution on you know, what we're discussing. So um, I'm looking for the council clerk to, um, out of these meetings, the actions that there are in some form, some sort of tracker, it could even be as simple as an Excel sheet. What were the actions? Whose action is it? 
And then let's just make sure that we're continuing to follow up on this so that we can get things closed out. We're not, we're having a lot of meetings and we're talking about a lot of things, but some things just keep coming back up. I mean, case in point, the, the NA meetings, right? We've talked about that over email. We've talked about that in meetings. What is it, what's the action that's needed? Do we need to define a policy for how the nutritional center is done? If that's the task, then let's get on that so that we can address kind of the whole use. Um, and I, I know there are other tools that can be used. I think the council clerk was trying to um, test some of them out earlier this year, but you know, I would like to see that as I was looking through the minutes, I was just kind of like, I don't know where, where some of those items are now. I don't know if there are any thoughts on that. But preferably something that can, um, you know, also reach into a, a project management system. So the kind of once we get these ideas solidified and have a project, we know what the status of the project is too. Okay. Any other comments by council members? Council Clerk, do you have all of that? Yes, sir. I have it. All right. Mm -hmm. Council Shreed, uh, if that's all on that, uh, citizen engagement. Right. And so this is actually an add on to that first point. Um, we need to get citizens more engaged. And if that means we need to have more committees to take action on certain mm -hmm. items, then we need to do that. So as an example, traffic mitigation is something that we've been talking about this entire term, right? Um, but we don't really have a solid plan of what we're going to do. If, if it's because we don't have enough resources internally to do that, then we need to put a traffic safety task force together and really get um, citizens engaged in this. There are a lot of issues that the citizens continue to raise around you know, the beautification, right? If we have a, a challenge with public works and we need a plan put in place, then you know, we, we can lean on the resources that we have in our city. There are citizens who are able and willing. Um, I think we just need to figure out ways to organize ourselves so that we can you know, provide clear tasks for them to help us you know, what, what we're trying to accomplish. So I would, um, and I know we kind of talked about this a little bit, having some sort of strategy session where we're gonna figure out what are the key areas that we wanna focus on along with the mayor and then putting plans of action in place with that with the city manager. And if, you know, is to the extent possible getting citizens engagement, you know, let's, let's do that so we can get some more things done. Any other comments from council members? All right. That is it for topics of discussion. Now we'll move into legislation. Um, council Clerk. Uh, Up is R 37 2022, a resolution approving the agreement with Good Company for the three month uh, provision of trash, recycling, and bulk items pickup. Item pickup. Madam Clerk. All right. Um, give me one second. Okay. Resolution R37, 2022, sponsored by our Jones Council member, co-sponsor at the request of the administration. Point of order, um, Council President, is she going to read all of these for a work session? No. Oh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, we don't need to read them. We need to, I thought it was there, there for discussion. Yes, just, just discuss it. Okay. Me? No. All right. Well, if we don't want to read them, that's that's fine. Um, they'll they'll be read at the regular right. session. Yeah. Not at okay. the regular session. They'll be read. 
Okay. Well, um, any comments? Uh, every councilwoman, council member has this in their packet. Um, any questions, concerns regarding this piece of legislation? Yeah. Um, so when is the three months going to start in this month? Is that when it's the three months? Yes, the three months actually started um, at the end of um, day see, one at was the beginning the of, the of May because the contract was up at the beginning of May. OK, so we're going into the second, second month. month. So where are we at with mm -hmm. RFPs and everything? The RFP is due next Friday. OK. All right. Have we received any uh, uh, takers for the RFP? We have not. It was put on. It was um, put in the PG Post. It was put on the E Maryland Marketplace, and it's on our website. It was sent out to specific vendors um, from the E Maryland Marketplace, but I have not heard back from any of them. I did reach out to a couple of them to make sure that they received the notification, and they did tell me that they received the notification, but they I have not received anything back. And typically, um, you know, outside of any questions, I wouldn't receive anything back until the day that the bid was due. Okay, so even good, were they, uh, they didn't submit anything either? Well, they, they haven't submitted any questions or anything like that, but I'll, I'll know next Friday, um, you know, who's submitting a bid on it. So that's Friday, June the... June the 10th. June 10th. Oh, excuse me, that's this Friday. I'm sorry, June the 10th, this Friday. At, right. at, um, let me pull up the time. I don't have the time. Just give me a quick second. So it's due at 4 p.m. on this Friday. So Monday morning, we should have a, a, a idea of who submitted a, a bid or not. Mm, I would say Monday by noon. Oh, Monday, oh yes, Monday, yes. We'll, we'll know Monday when we're at um, MML. I mean, we'll know Friday afternoon, but. Oh, so Monday you're gonna be at MML? Yes. But I'll, be, I'll have the proposals with me then, but we do have to have a committee to review those uh, proposals. A committee to review the RFPs? Yeah, typically the RFPs are not reviewed by just one person. They're reviewed by more than one person because they're, um, if it's a straight bid, then I guess it's not really any different. It's, you don't need a committee if it's a straight bid, but when it's an RFP, um you typically have a committee that reviews them but in this case i guess it's a straight bid so it, it would be what it is uh councilman herring would you correct me if i'm wrong but i've never known the city to have a committee to look at the bids normally we get the tabulation of the bids from the city manager and the person that and the, and the persons that um submitted a bid if it's a bid, if it's a straight bid, it is. Yeah, normally what we would what we would do is um, when the bids come in, the, the um, city manager will let us know the bids when the bids are going to be open, and the council members are welcome to come. And normally they would ask um, the council clerk to witness the bid opening, if just in case, and maybe the um, executive assistant just to have two people there to witness the bid opening. Now usually was it. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't no formal committee. It was just making sure you had people there to witness. And usually, it was a council clerk, the executive. I mean, the executive assistant or the um, admin assistant, and anybody else that really wanted to come because it's open to the public and the council members that wanted to come to it also. So, so if they don't come in till Friday at four o'clock is the is the deadline. Um, I'm sure they're not going to open them four to five, five o'clock, everybody's gone. Then MML We do open is... them at four. We open them at four when they come in. Oh, you open them at four. 
Yeah, okay. and then I put the list out um, of what the results are. I give it to Monet to post on the website, and then I can send that to you all Friday. Okay, so this is not going to be what I'm looking for that there will be no lag in time because of the fact that this is so crucial. This con this resolution that we're giving them three months is going to be up at the end of July. So Correct. we need to have in place a trash yes. company. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Next up is um, uh, resolution select the city vice president. Um, then we just collect these two together. A resolution to select the council president, um, and I rely on the um, well, tenure members because this will be my first year, you know, introducing or discussing anything like this. Is there anything else we need to do for this? And in a work session, Add or we name. just, I'm sorry? Add the name. Okay. Uh, so we do it now and not at the regular session? Yeah, because that's what's going to come to the floor. Okay. All right. Um, for uh, citizens' information, uh, and we could give it a resolution number, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Madam Clerk, could you give these two, um, we could start with Vice President. What's the number for that? The number for Vice President is R42-2022. And so that would make the President 43. Mm -hmm. And so the um, Vice President will be Vice President Ferguson and the President will be uh, myself. Noted. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, a resolution authorizing the City Council of Glenarden, Maryland to break for recess. Uh, any comments, concerns from council members as relates to this resolution? I'll just mention, uh, just for citizens who's watching, that even if um, council goes into recess, council still has the ability to meet uh, in um, if necessary, in particular, right now, as we're in budget season, uh, even if we go into recess, we can still meet to pass a budget. Uh, but any council members comments on this um, resolution and also Madam Clerk, could you assign it, I guess this would be 44. Okay, uh, resolution R44-2022 will be a resolution authorizing the City Council of Glenarden, Maryland to break for recess. Okay. Any comments, concerns? Okay. Moving on to the next one. Uh, next up is a resolution to appoint Roland Mincy to the Glen Arden Youth Advisory. Any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, Ms. President. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 Councilman Harris, I saw Ms. Jones first. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go to her, then come to you. Councilman Jones. Uh, we didn't receive any um, background information on this person. Uh, or uh, what you all consider a resume. Uh, I know before I had talked about not having a resume, not that most committee members are not required to send in a resume, but uh, after listening to my colleagues uh, and they're giving me, uh, advising me on why we need that information, I think that that information should um, be presented with the uh, person that it's being asked to be on a committee or asked to be on a committee. So we didn't receive anything from Mr. Mincy at all. If, if we could get that information, I would appreciate it. Okay. Um, uh, Councilwoman Gill, sorry. I'm sorry. 
was uh, Councilman Harry. Yeah. yeah, Councilman Harry. Did I come to you, Ms. Oh, no, Ms. Jones uh, basically said what I was going to say. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that, Councilman Harry. Uh, Councilman McGill. Yes, and Ms. Jones basically set up what I was going to say as well. I just also wanted to add an additional layer to say that. Um, why it's important for us to, to do this is I know we don't necessarily have to interview folks and I'm fine with that, but it's always good to actually have something that showcases who this person is because we are making a decision that is for the citizens. So just wanted to say that. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Barbara, if you could. Get all that information for us, please. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All right. Moving on, uh, a resolution appointing. Get a number. I'm sorry. Thank you, Council Ferguson. A number for that. Um, sorry. Um, uh, uh, before we do that, should we give it a number? Um, before we have all the information? Or should we wait till we have that information? That's a good question. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we have, you know, turned some people away before. We can wait. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say the same. I think we should wait until we get the material, the requ required or requested materials. Okay. All right, let's hold on that, Madam Clerk. Sorry about that. Uh, next up is a resolution appointing Paul Michael Braxton to the Ethics Committee. Um, questions, concerns? Madam Clerk, if you could stop sharing. I'm gonna go through these next ones rather quickly so I can see if um, someone's raising their hand. Um, do we have all the, uh, I'm sorry, Councilman Fareed? You can, you finish, finish what you're asking. Uh, just with all these, making sure we have the information that we just discussed. Um, for for all of them, because we have one more after this. That's all I was going to say. My my question is about how are we getting these names? Um, are we sending out a communication to the community asking for people to volunteer? I'm just wondering because it seems like we're doing this in piecemeal, like this youth advisory committee. We like they don't have enough people to operate even as a committee yet, right? Like I'm not sure why we're not just doing this all at once. If we put somebody on, their their term starts already, right? No, their term hasn't started. When when would their term start, Ms. Um, when, when they have a complete, they need five. It can't be active until they have the um the number of committee members. Mm -hmm. so I was wondering why, like how we're doing this. I I don't know if it's just based off of recommendations or if we're sending out a solicitation to the citizens to say, hey, if you're interested in being on the Youth Advisory Council, submit your application, your resume, so that we can get this done. I mean, we, we've been a whole year already. Okay. Uh, these are all uh, appointments, I believe, by the mayor, so Mayor Cross. Thank you, Council President. Yes, we have already sent out um, advertisements. Actually, Ms. Ward has been running it on our website. Uh, she also built a, a flyer of sorts to uh, ask for volunteers. Uh, we've ran various volunteer sessions. And so from those sessions, these names have surfaced. Um, for the Ethics Commission, uh, particularly uh, if you take uh, Ms. Um, Yvonne White as a personal ask, but um, Mr. Rowland um, was one that actually did see our uh, advertisement. He is a Glenn Ardner. Uh, each of you should have gotten his resume. I'm, I was surprised to hear that you didn't have it, but uh, 
check your inboxes, you do have his resume there. Um, so he is a native Glen Ardner and is a uh, educated from Kettle Run High School, uh, graduated in 2018, uh, but he uh, technically works at the Glen Arden Community Center and is part of supporting them with their youth engagement there. So he is one of the uh, young 20 uh, year group members of our community. Uh, he's empathetic about handling concerns and complaints as well. So, but check your inbox if you, could, if, info. if you could resend that, we, I, I don't have it. Okay. Neither do I, I don't have it. Nope. It looks like none of the members have it. Okay. There's nothing going on with the email stuff. So apologies if you did send it. We okay, thank you so much. I'll make sure I send it. Mr. President, may I? Yes, Mayor. Yeah, I mean, it isn't. It's, I mean, if you're doing social media, then you're not. You're only touching ten percent, maybe, of the other citizens in this community. I mean, something needs to go out in the mail because I know the people in my ward are asking, okay, where, where where are these people from? I don't see it. I don't get it. I don't get anything. They're not getting any communication from the city of Glenard, so they don't know there's these committee openings. There's something in the mail that's asking for position, asking for volunteers for these positions. And maybe you get a, a, a broader response from all of Leonard, not just from a certain segment. And that's the, the social media segment. Um, so also with these people, I would like to interview some of these people because I, I don't even know half of these people. And I, even with the resume, I would still like to interview because the gentleman that the mayor just spoke about seemed like he'll be perfect for the youth advisory committee, but you know, that's my opinion, so. All right, thanks. All right. Um, how, how many uh, vacancies are we waiting on for the ethics commission? Mayor Cross. Three. So you're waiting on three vacancies. Um, you did have another resolution that was submitted, but it looks like it didn't make the docket because of the, um, didn't have the resume with it. Um, but uh, you actually have three resolutions that should have came to the council for completing the ethics commission. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so, in connection with that will also be a resolution appointing uh, Yvonne White to that this commission. And so we will wait for the, um, the supporting documentation and then the council can go from there for the confirmation process. Uh, and Mayor Cross will expect the, expect the third one to come through. Council President. Uh, Mayor, not Mayor Cross, um, uh, Councilman Jones. No, uh, okay, I, so I'm not clear here. You were saying that we already have on file three people or we have these two people for the Ethics Commission? Because the only persons I have is Yvonne White and um, Paul Braxton. And Mr. Braxton and Ms. White have uh, resumes on the back of their uh, res uh, their resolution. So I have that information. Who are the other three people? Because the ethics committee is is is, is five people that um, are appointed to that board. So we're waiting on three more people, or we just have uh, are are they saying that we have five people? because I don't have five, I only have two. And these are two brand new resolutions. I haven't seen any other resolutions for the ethics committee. So you have two members that would come back, um, or at least they haven't stated that they would do not have an interest in coming back. And that would be um, Commissioner um, Squire Newsom. Uh, and then you also have uh, Miss Vanessa Armstrong. So those two are, 
two that have not stated an in disinterest in coming back to the Ethics Commission. So at which case, then you would add uh, Paul Michael Braxton, you would add Yvonne B. White, and then we did have a inquiry from Elgin Funches. We were waiting for his resume. So I will follow back up to uh, see if we can get his resume to push that resolution. That would complete your ethics commission. Uh, we would redo the um, standing um, for Newsom and Armstrong. So Newsom and Armstrong, uh, their resolution is, is from what term to what term? You're on mute, Mayor Cross. Their resolution ended on um, actually last year, but in the resolution, they are still inside of the window of service until they or the city council removes them. So even after that, um, we can keep them in place, uh, as you stated, without a full commission, they can't operate either way. Uh, so with the three coming in, um, pending the council's approval, uh, Mr. Fonches, Mr. Braxton, and Mrs. White, then we would make sure that with that approval, we would send you the uh, appropriate documentation for Armstrong and Newsom, at which case you have a full round for your ethics commission. If they're still interested. So, um, all right, I'll pull those two resolutions and see what the time frame was and to check that uh, the, the, the wording for that. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns from council members? Okay, we'll move on to the next resolution. Um, a resolution to approve a contract with Steel Beach Productions LLC for videotaping, broadcasting and post-production services. Any questions? This was at the request of the administration. Any I questions? have a question, Council President. Yes, Council when I was Jones. When I was flipping through the documents that were sent for this Steel Beach, I found uh, the two there were two other people that were that, that presented a bid, Travis Smith and a, Marcella Shepard. But when I found the, the bid for Mr. Shepard, I only found one page and this says 12 of 12. You can't see it, oh yes you can, 12 of 12. So uh, where are the other documents uh, for these bids? And did Mr. Travis Smith just submit these three pages. And how, who determined, um, I thought it was the council's determination once we looked at the bids, uh, who would be chosen? So um, I came in on the middle part of the um, project. The mayor and the um, webmaster and media specialist had been working and the executive assistant had been working with the um, firms that were going to be brought in for the um, videotaping um, and post-production services um, as a consultant. Um, I believe Mr. Travis did submit um, very few pages, um, but he pulled himself out of the running. Um, and he um, he had a, a different engagement that he wanted to go with. So um, Mr. Um, Rick Gray is the owner of Still Beach Productions. And um, I don't know if the mayor wants to add anything to it, but they had met with um, the mayor and the webmaster um, media specialist and the executive assistant to look at the, at the cable um, production space and to put together their bid. And um, we selected Mr. Gray to bring to you all um, based on his knowledge and his pricing. 
Okay, the other thing that I didn't particularly care about in his contract or that was, that's was that been written is it's saying that he'll bring his own equipment. I thought as a um, having our own cable TV station, what we need is somebody that's gonna come in and upgrade all of the equipment. And um, we, would, we have enough in our uh, PEG grant, public education grant that will afford us to buy the equipment and upgrade our TV studio. Right. Um, I think that the majority of the equipment that he would bring, um, that would be his own equipment, would be equipment to do outside um, tapings and things like that. Like if you all wanted to tape the Glen Arden Day and do post production on that type of thing, not production in house. The in house production would be evaluating what equipment that we have currently and whether or not that equipment should be um, upgraded. All right. I, I just didn't want to bring somebody in that was not going to upgrade our TV studio. So, um, because that definitely needs to be done. It needs to be brought into the 21st century. Correct. Thank you. Are there any other questions or concerns from uh, the council? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Councilman Harris. There's a couple of things. on. Um, Page two of the contract, consultant agreement, um, item number F, where it's, it's um, outlining um, some of his responsibilities. Um, number F says other related media filming and broadcasting tasks delegated to the city, delegated by the city manager or the mayor of Glenard. And I think you need to add the city council on that too, because we do have events that we would like to have recorded also. Okay. Um, I guess uh, my confusion is coming in also on page, on page three, the second paragraph for additional services shall be provided by the consultant on an as needed basis. Um, and this says $450 per event for a maximum of two events per month and no more than $900 per month. But when you go to when you go to his sealed bid, uh, sealed dollar bid form, his last page where he was signed, he wrote in there um, something completely different. He said broadcast services in amount of it's on, and on his contract, it's page 12 or 12. It says an amount of 450, and then it says $175 per hour with a minimum with a two-hour minimum. So I'm I'm like, is he is this doesn't does he know that this that you've been not offering the same, we're not offering what he's asking for? He this? does. He's seen the copy of the contract and he is fine with the contract. Okay. So I guess, I guess, so if we have somebody come out for, let's say for one event and that event lasts a half an hour, we're gonna get charged $450? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the way it is, Council President. Uh, Council, Councilman Herring, forgive me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, the, and the thing is, is this is offsite. Keep in mind, this is offsite stuff. Um, for things that are in the council chambers, the regular meetings, those are included, but a, these are additional services. So like council, um, city manager said, um, Glen Arden Day, if you want that recorded for posterity, that's additional service. Like we would usually do the 100 year birthday record, the drive-bys, um, you know, that's additional services. So things like that. Okay, and I guess my thing is, if we do a drive-by, which usually lasts about a half an hour, we're gonna pay $450 for that event. I think that's excessive. Honestly, I think that's excessive. Now I can see if you're doing Glen On Day, which is like seven, eight hours, that's, that's, that's something different, but a drive-by and you're gonna charge us 450 or he go out here and he go and just do some, a few photo ops for the, uh, like with the Memorial Day service, which was like 45 minutes. We're going to pay $450, $450 for an event. 
I think that's a little excessive. I think I think I mean I can see you gonna hit us on the hourly rate. Uh, that's different, but four hundred fifty dollars. Mm -mm. That's that's excessive to me. So, all right. Thank you, Councilor Harry. Any other questions, comments, concerns? No, that's it for me. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> Okay. Um, can go ahead and give this a number, uh, Council Clerk. Okay. So, what number so would that be? Uh, so the number would be R forty five two thousand twenty two, and again, this is a resolution to approve a contract with Steel Beach Production LLC for videotape and broadcasting and post production services. Okay. Next up is a resolution for the City of Glenarm to approve the application to receive a financing for Community Legacy State revitalization program through the Department of Housing and Community Development. Any questions, concerns? President. Council, Councilman Harry. What is that? So uh, this uh, is a grant um, that's offered through DHCD because we are a member of the sustainable communities through DHCD. You all had applied for that designation a number of years ago. And it's good for five years. Um, what you have to do is every five years, you have to update your, um, I think it's called your community plan with um, DHCD. Ours is good for, I think, another two years. So I think you all did this about three years ago. And what it allows you is access to a, a designated pool of money um, that the um, governor sets aside for those special communities. And this is a grant for the playground equipment for the Seventh Street Park. And we are we are applying in the amount of two hundred and forty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, okay. Is that on the, is that on the legislation? What we're, we're applying for? I didn't see that on there. Are you talking about the, the grant in particular? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know we're applying for it, but you would I think, I mean, there's nothing on here to indicate, you know, that we're applying for this grant for Seventh Street Park or what it, you know, I mean, I see the $240,000, but I think you need to put some, some type of wording in here that it's for Seventh Street Park. Okay. That's, I mean, that's what I feel. Um, unless this is the wording that they require from them, from HUD, I mean, um, housing or whatever that is. But I think something should be in here that is for 7th Street Park so that we know that this that this this money is earmarked for 7th Street Park and it doesn't go anywhere else. <coughs> Council on the free. Um, yes, I echo that. But also, can we be clear on whether this is a grant or a loan? Because the consequences are very different. It says, uh, hereby approve the request for financial assistance in the form of a grant or a loan up to the amount of $240,000. It should just stay in the form of a grant. Okay, yeah, this is um, the template that they provide, so I can make that change. Okay, but in the template, do they provide it because it can be a grant or a loan? Or I typically it's a grant. I'm not sure why they have a loan in there, except for except for when they have like super big projects that are multi million dollar projects. Mm -hmm. But let's make sure because we don't want to end up getting a loan. Right, it's a grant that we're applying for. Okay, so but I'll make that change in the resolution. Thank you. What is, um, I'm trying to remember the exact um, wording for it. The one that we went through a few weeks ago around the- um, Exercise equipment? Yeah, the exercise equipment. How does that fit in with this? So it would be completely separate. 
this is for the actual playground equipment. Okay. Yeah. So let's, you know, in addition to saying 7th Street Park, let's say for the playground equipment in 7th Street Park. Okay. Because I know there was a deficit um, with what was needed for the fitness equipment. And I just want to make sure this doesn't go towards that deficit, that this is for the playground. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman Farid. Councilman Jones. And my question is, uh, is this in conjunction with that that other resolution where the, uh, the grant was $30,000 and we would have to put up $240,000? No, that- Is this to pay that? No, this is a separate grant. This is through the Department of Housing and Community Development for playground equipment. Yeah, but are um, you getting two separate? Uh, two it, separate it, grants. The one for thirty thousand is through the National Fitness Courts, and the money that we were augmenting that with, we had requested that it come from ARPA. It was one hundred and forty-two thousand dollars. Okay, so you got one hundred and forty-two thousand with an additional thirty thousand, which is what's that? Uh, one hundred seventy thousand dollar grant, and then you got this two hundred and forty thousand dollar grant for for one. For 7th Street, all this is for 7th Street. Yes. So playgrounds it, are equipment are expensive because you have to. This is including all of the site prep and the um, and the architectural engineering services and all of that. That's a lot of money. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councilman Harry, I see you're unmuted. Do you have another? Uh, no, no. Okay. All right, is there no more questions for that? We'll move on to, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we can go ahead and give it a number as um, City Manager Barbara will add those uh, additions. Okay, um, resolution R46-2022 be a resolution for the city of Glen Arden to approve the application and receipt of financing for a community legacy state revitalization program through the Department of Housing and Community Development. Okay. Point of order, Council President. Uh, Councilman Jones. Um, so we didn't give uh, numbers to the uh, resolutions for uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Braxton or Yvonne White. You're right, because um, we do have their support and documentation. Um, this is commission. Yeah. Okay. All right. Madam Clerk, could you give those to uh, a resolution number, please? Yes, sir. So let me go back up here. Resolution. R47 2022 will be a resolution appointing Paul Michael Braxton to the Ethics Commission. Resolution number R48 2022 will be a resolution appointing Yvonne B. White to the Ethics Commission. Thank you for the reminder, Councilwoman Jones. You're welcome. And okay. yeah, we're good. All right, next up is a resolution authorizing amusement rental for Glen Arden Day. And this is uh, introduced by our council member, Perry. Yeah, Any questions? Yeah, go uh, ahead. Go we'll ahead. Where we are, because we have been planning Glen Arden Day. We've been, um, we had a number of meetings already with the committee. Um, me, Councilwoman Guillaume, um, Councilman Harrison, and some, and uh, the Council Clerk, along with um, Michelle Cheeks and some citizen volunteers. So we're moving right along to get something planned. We're trying to do something really nice this year. So we um, contracted out with um, Fantasy World again for uh, amusement rides. Um, we're looking at um, bumper cars, uh, rock wall, 
um, an obstacle course, a laser tag, uh, kitty merry-go-round, and uh, what they call turbo tubs or something like that. Um, but we're just trying to, you know, since we're coming out of COVID and everything, we're trying to have a really nice one. Um, we've also reached out to a caterer that gave us a really good deal on giving out, um, like we usually feed the people with, with dinner and these people had like fish, chicken, and a bunch of sides, He's doing like $10 a head per person. So you're going to cover us for 400 people. And we also looking at, um, we reached out to all our stores and I know Reverend Nikki of First Baptist Church is on the committee and she knows somebody at John. So she's reaching out to John and I'm a small one, knows somebody at Shoppers. So we're trying to get a lot of contributions in also so we don't have to, you know, spend a lot of money. So this is just the first phase, just um, trying to lock in the um, equipment because a lot of a lot of municipalities are having events this year because it's, they're coming out of COVID. So I'm trying to have the little, you know, community days. So this is where we are with that. It's, it's about, mm, I think it's about like maybe about 6,000 more than what we did last year, but we have more rides this year than we did last. I mean, 6,000 more than 2019, when, when, which was when we had, last had Glen Arden Day, but it's more rides than that, um, than we had then back then. So any questions I'm free to answer. Sounds like a carnival. Yep, that's what it's going to be. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Guillaume. Thank you, Council President. I just wanted to add to what Councilman Herring stated, which is we have been getting, I mean, we, we get, we have our own planning committee, like he stated, and we have a slew of emails. And so if anything looks like it's too pricey or whatever, trust me when I say that everything has been vetted, you know, so just wanted to, to add that to the conversation. Thank you, Councilman Gill. Uh, Councilman Jones. Um, my question is, is are we having a, the um, live horse again for the kids to ride this year or not? No, because every year we had a horse uh, and my falls off. Oh, okay. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Thank you. Falls off, we had to call that paramedics. <laughs> yeah, my brain, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After Miss Ferguson, grandbaby fell off and like, that's it for the horses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. Are there any other questions, concerns? Okay. I right, thank uh, thank you guys, all the uh, members who volunteered uh, to make this a successful event. Next up, number. Yeah. Ah, thank you, <laughs> Madam Clerk. Uh, resolution. R49 2022 is a resolution to authorize amusement rentals for Glen Arden Day. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next up, uh, a resolution to revise the rules, regulations, and fee structure, a fee schedule for the Gold Room and Community Center at Woodmore Town Center. Uh, this is a very thick packet. Um, and to be honest, I'm not through all of it, uh, but want to open it up to uh, council members for comments. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Councilman Harry. Yeah, I think, I mean, with the importance of this packet, I think we really need to set a separate meeting for this mm -hmm. to review this also has this, um, and, and I still think it also needs to go through the attorney for legal sufficiency because it's a lot of legal terminology and legal, legal stuff in here. But I think we first need to go through it ourselves and set us up a meeting to review all of this so we can get clarification and clear, be clear on what we're trying to do with this. Um, one, one question for clarity, uh, Ms. Harry, did you want to go to legal first or the council first? I think we should go to the council first and then ship it off to legal. Because there's no need for them to review it if we're going to make changes or cut something out or, or do something else. Okay. So we need to do what we need to do and then send it to them for legal sufficiency. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Harry. Um, Councilman Farid? Yes. Um, to add on to that, I think we also need to look at the lease that we have with the, the new owners um, and make sure our understanding is correct of what's in there. I've seen the lease agreement and it. It, the interpretation on how that room is supposed to be used isn't articulated that way in the lease. 
exactly. So we just need to make sure we understand what the expectation is um, and that our understanding of how that room is supposed to be used is correct um, so that we can want to have that understanding and then make the changes. Okay. Uh, uh, Ms. Barbara, do you have a copy of that lease? Not on me right now, no, I don't. So I'll just, all right, do you have? I think we have a copy of it, but I have to double check. Okay. All right. Um, was that it, uh, Councilman Farid? Okay, Councilman Jones. So, you, has the Woodmore Management uh, presented us with a new lease concerning the Woodmore Town Center Community Center room? No. Pardon? No. Oh, okay. Well, we need. Okay, so I guess what uh, Councilwoman Farid is asking for is to make sure that they don't have anything. If they're not going to present us with a new one, or if they, you know, um, have or have not. So, um, and the other thing is with with this um, resolution and the new rules that we have for the community center. So you, uh, this was not sent to um, be uh, the legal sufficiency wasn't done on this. Ms. Robinson did send it to the attorney, I believe, but um, since we are really kind of, I guess, um, I don't know, in, I don't know where things stand with the attorney as far as him reviewing things since he's tendered his resignation and he still is applying, he is still responding to us, but I'm not sure whether or not he um, had indicated, and Ms. Robinson might be able to talk more about this if she's talked with him, but whether or not he's going to be reviewing a document of this size. Okay. Well, Council Council uh, President Curtis, can you um, uh, reach out to the attorney and find out if you know? Because if not necessarily for him to do it, but maybe someone in the firm could do it for us as a uh, while we're in the process of transitioning to a new attorney or a, a legal services if they could kind of look okay. at this document, because I don't think that this is something that we need to uh, uh, just let it sit around and not address it uh, and drag our feet because we have, um, we need to uh, put some concrete rules in place to have for renting the gold room and for uh, the um, uh, community center, things need to be put in place. Uh, we need to have some uh, structure and discipline for those, those areas that belong to the city. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Robinson, do you have any um, additional information yes. to share? On yes, I just wanted to um, actually speak to uh, Ms. Uh, Councilwoman Fareed's question about the lease. I actually did pull the resolution and look at the lease. Um, you guys initially signed it at July, I'm sorry, June 1st of 2012, and your current lease says that it automatically renews every five years. And when I looked in the terms, I think you basically had to give a 60 day notice in order to cancel it or restructure it prior to that renewal date. So you guys actually technically just renewed June 1st for five years. Thank you. So my question was less about whether or not we were under a lease or, or whether or not it had been renewed, but what our understanding of the lease is. From my recollection of the lease, it doesn't say in there, for example, that we can only charge $50 for, you know, a room. so that's the type of thing that I'm talking about. We need to make sure our understanding from them is, is correct on how we could use the room, because if they're not, if they're not the ones dictating and saying that we can only charge for whatever, however we came up with the $50 and we can charge more, then we can charge more. So that's what I mean. Like we just need to get a, a, an understanding. I think some of what I've heard is is an interpretation of what's in the lease and it's not explicit in the lease. I agree. I actually went through it with the front to comb and kind of highlighted some things, even to speak to that whole HVAC piece about being able to control that. Um, it says that the landlord shall be responsible for payment of the electric and utilities. But my question is, do they have that restriction on any other tenant in that? center. So I actually had the same questions you had and some other things highlighted um, in terms of like un, um, supervised usage and things like that. So um, I completely agree with that. Okay, thank you. Mr. President, 
councilman Harris. That room originally, like I said, originally that room was dedicated to the city as a community room to be used only as a community room, not a rental facility. That's another thing I want to say about this contract that we have here. Those need to be separated. They cannot be on the same, they cannot be on the same contract. Those got to be two separate contracts. One for the community room, one for the um one for the um gold room. Because every time when they, they come back to us and say is that you're renting the room, you're not supposed to be renting the room. It's supposed to be a community room for citizens to use for meetings and, and all of that. No, there's no fixed price on there about how much we can charge for maintenance, but we can't charge enough to make a profit. We're supposed to charge enough to cover the expenses for the use of the room. That's it. Because that's what it's supposed to be, a nominal fee for the community. Not a, not a money-making operation. I know everybody want to talk about making profits off of everything. It's another one. It's another give back. They gave it, they gave it to us in a detailed site plan that was signed by uh, the city and um, approved by the county and the planning board. So, no, there's no $50 fee. We just threw that $50 fee out there just because we had just started to run up and we didn't know exactly what the overhead costs were going to be. But, I mean, it can be raised up, but it can't be raised up to where you're trying to make a profit off of it. Because again, it was a community room. We had, actually had to go back and forth with them with an attorney before saying, no, we're not renting it. It's for community events. And they're like, well, no, you're having this event. You're having that event. You're having this type of an event. And your, your paper says you're renting it out. You have a rental agreement. And we're not supposed to be having all of that. Those need to be two separate contracts. They should not be on the same piece of paper. Well, Mr. Heron, I did clarify on that um, where it says usage. And I was very careful to write usage when we were referring to the community center. And I agree from what I've heard that it is a meeting room and I've been trying to clarify that with people who called. Um, and if you notice that that rate was not raised that much, not as a rental thing, but to at least cover the cost of staffing over there and the supplies, because up until this year's budget, there hadn't even been a line item for the community center, but it's it's been funded in terms of staffing and supplies by the gold room. Um, so that was basically just to kind of cover staffing and supplies, and that's pretty much it. The budget always had a line item for Wilmore Community Center. It's not for the, the gold unless room. They, unless they took, no, it was, it was for Wilmore Community Center, unless they took it out recently, because they always had one, unless they took it out in the last budget. We've always had a line item. When we originally got that room, we wanted to make sure we kept that separate and that we could attract the supplies and the usage in that room so that we can budget wisely and charge an adequate um, maintenance fee for that room to the uh, people who use it. But um, again, they, those should be two separate documents. They should not be on the same document, the gold room and, and the non-community room. They should be two separate documents because they do on two different things. Okay. Well, if you have any clarity on that um, on that budget thing, like I said, Dean and I, I mean, I'm sorry, the treasurer and I actually discovered that when trying to do this year's budget. So if you have any additional insight that you can provide, that'll be great on that, because we were completely confused as to how that was being fleshed out for budget purposes. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Heron, I, I do agree that this is, um, you know, with all these rule changes in the packet, um, that it'll probably deserve uh, its own meeting. Um, so we can uh, set that for the future. <clears throat> um, so with that, any objection to holding off, giving it a resolution number until we move it out to thoroughly review? Okay. So, Madam Clerk, we won't give this a resolution number yet. All right. Um, last up under legislation is a resolution to establish a special fund known as the Glen Arden Intergenerational Poverty Relief Fund to reduce the impact of economic hardships arising from the pandemic caused by the coronavirus in the city of Glen Arden. Uh, Councilwoman Guillaume, are you on mute? Sure, thank you, Council President. Um, I'm going to try to speak as quickly as I can because I know there's still other things we want to touch on. So I literally went throughout the entire city and I saw over 70 to 80 homes that are in bad shape, right? Without knowing the homeowners or what their incomes are. So I, I just wanna start off with that and now go on and say that the impetus behind this particular legislation is twofold. So 
citizens who happen to be homeowners with low incomes and or citizens on fixed income, such as seniors and the people with disabilities and veterans are in need of help. And I strongly believe society should not be criminalizing poverty. Secondly, um, thanks to ARPA's final rule, cities and states throughout the country have been providing assistance to the population that I just mentioned. And I was disturbed, extremely disturbed. And I, I have to uh, give a special shout out to the city manager who I called several times in regards to code enforcement and to also try to get this moving, um, this particular research that I had been doing um, moving. I was disturbed to see programs are currently in existence in Maryland and Prince George's County, but Glen Arden citizens cannot utilize any of those programs because of where our city is located. Those specific programs for housing rehabilitation assistance are the Prince George's County Home Ownership Preservation Program, they call it HOP. And the second one is the Blue Line Corridor Home Owner Rehabilitation Assistance Program. Now with the very first one that I mentioned, the, the Prince George's County HOP program, it was launched back in, in December, 2021. And the city, I'm sorry, the county um, made a $1 million investment uh, into this utilizing ARPA funds to assist homeowners by providing up to $30,000 and let me be clear, people have to meet a certain income threshold because this is strictly for low incomes. Um, and by low income, I mean 80, below 80% 80 incomes and, be, and um, up to 50% as far as minimum. Um, and households under 50% of the area median income, they can receive up to $50,000. So below 80 is 30. And when I mentioned 50, again, I mentioned 30,000, but that's again, that's the Prince George's County program. We are not, we don't have a million dollars worth of investment. So hence my $200,000. Now, why would, why were we not able to utilize this program meeting Glen Arden? Because it's always a fine print. And when you look at the fine print, you realize that you had to be in a qualified census track. And the qualified census track is, tech, is, is very clear that it, you have to be a mile of by the print, I'm sorry, you have to be near the purple line. So that we were immediately knocked out. The second program was the blue line corridor and you guessed it, we have to be literally by the blue line. And I don't mean we can drive to the blue line. I mean, you have to literally be by the blue line. So we also were not eligible um, for getting this type of assist assistance. I was extremely, unhappy when I did when I did all this research because I felt that there are a lot of families in Glen Arden that are in need of this type of support, but just because of where we are as far as our jurisdiction, they can't get any assistance. So within the within the legislation, I did there is a line item as you can see that says that it's at the discretion of the city council for us to establish this. Um, and go further. I, I feel that when we look at all these programs and not just locally, but also uh, in other cities, they are very clear as to different things that are fundable and, and are not. So we can do our due diligence and look at what's fundable, such as roofing and gutters, electrical repairs, plumbing repair, tree removals, et cetera. Um, and other things like building a deck is not something that we are going to do. The other thing is we it has to be owner occupied. I know that there are, I believe it was, I, I don't want to say the wrong council person, but I believe it was Councilman Herring at one point, I think it was at a last meeting where we were talking about homes being occupied and being rented where it was zoned for probably two, how two family members or, or probably three, but now it's like six, seven, eight folks living in there. So this, these are not for homes that are being rented. These, the, the owners have to occupy um, the residents and they have to be obviously Glen Arden citizens by default. And lastly, like I mentioned, they have to fall within the income, um, the low income verification line, which the city, the state all has that. And I also have it as well. So that's it in a nutshell. I tried to speak in less than four minutes. So hopefully that was helpful and I'll take any questions. Um, Mr. President, ma'am. Yes, uh, Councilman Good Young. Um, um, I know I had I had a couple of seniors that I got on a program in the county. It was um, it was almost like a program like you were talking about, 
And mm -hmm. what they would do is they would actually come in, they would fix up their senior's home and they would put a lien on it and they would get their money back once it's sold. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they would waive it. I'm not sure what that program was or if you if you ran into it. Um, I don't know if it's funded or not, because sometimes it's funded, sometimes it's not. But I, right. yeah, um, so I, I I do know they had they had that program. I oh, got oh I, I, thank you. And so thank you for saying that. And the city manager can also attest, research everything. So I believe that program, that it was the Maryland Housing Rehabilitation Program, I believe. Um, and that one is a loan now. And they stopped doing it right now because since ARPA funds came in and all the other programs that have been um, coming in, again, they're all saying that they're full. They don't have the, uh, even down to for utilities, you know, the home energy programs, like every single thing that we can think of has been full, but those two particular signature programs from that that the county and the state had done that I mentioned, the speaking specifically of the Blue Line Corridor in Prince George's County, it was in response to, I believe what you were saying, um, Councilman Herring, where they were going to just utilize the ARPA funds to address that need. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see if I can find that paperwork. I'm gonna see if I can, and I'll send it to you. Please, uh, please. See if they even have it. They, sometimes they'll change the name of a program, but mm -hmm. it's something. I mean, it, it'll give us something else to look at too. If we, you know, while we're trying to get ours together, maybe we can direct them to that and reach out to our county council rep and say, "Hey, what, what you got out there? What other programs I got out there for our people?" Because I mean, a lot there are a lot of seniors. I know our seniors just talked to me recently about getting her step fixed or either right. getting assistance to put a ramp on because she's no longer going to be able to go up and down the steps. Exactly, and may if I may. Um, so I literally wrote down, you all can't see all this stuff. You could probably see it. it probably looks like gibberish or just a blank screen, but I literally wrote down all of the addresses and of homes that I saw. And what I would love to do is if we, as a council, maybe I can do it individually, like with you, Councilman Harris, we can go down Ward 1 and Councilman Harrison, maybe we can go down Ward 2, Councilman, Councilwoman Fareed, Ward 3, and, and those who are at large can join us. But I literally, like, as far as Ward 3 is concerned, um, 7th Street, 9th Street, Tyrell, 4th Street, like, those uh, are, those streets are in, some homes are in bad shape. Ward 2, there was Leslie, Glenn, McLean, um, Ward 1, we are, you know, Fisk and, and Johnson and Delwood. So it's a lot of these streets that I agree with you 100%, a home, excuse me, um, Councilman Herring, that I feel we can literally do something. And if we find additional programs like you mentioned that are still here, then let's just try to make it happen. Because I, I just, it breaks my heart to see that there are seniors who can't cut their grass and we can act and they get cited when we can actually have programs that have people to come and cut their grass. So I'll stop talking because I see other people's hands are up. Councilman <laughs> Free. Yes, Councilwoman Guillaume, as we spoke about, I would like to be a co-sponsor on this. But I also had a question of um, the mayor from your report. I was going to ask this later, but it seems relevant here. Um, uh, an ARPA money resolution to make a $50,000 not to exceed $200,000 elig eligibility to help individual citizens in need of help due to COVID-19 on their housing um, st instability. So I don't know if this is something that should be like combined or, you know, how it should go together. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. So Here's I'd like to answer. So thank you, Councilwoman Fried. I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? I apologize. No, and I'll let the man, uh, well, it's at the discretion of, of Council President. But I will say this. Um, so I would say a few months ago, it's no secret that I was a little, un I was under the, I was sick, but months ago, and Ms. Barber, you can try to attest to how long ago that, that had been when I was trying to figure something out regarding this. And later on, I would say probably a few weeks ago, Mayor Cross sent an email to both council, to both city manager Barber, and I was CC'd on that email as well. So it'll just see, to your, to your point or your question, Councilwoman Fareed, the stars aligned, if that makes sense, right? Now, as far as the amount, about the 50,000 to 200,000, that that I, I'll, I'll let the mayor speak for herself. I can only speak for my program, right? So where, when, excuse me, I don't want to say my program, my legislation, my proposed legislation, what 
so the way I look at it is the is Prince George's County had a million dollars set aside, right? And they were giving thirty thousand to folks who met that eighty percent on down threshold, or fifty thousand to those who met that um, fifty percent area median income threshold. That's with a million dollars, you know, because they had a lot of ARPA funds. We as a municipality, we don't have that um, a million dollars to invest. So with $200,000 set aside, unless council wants to add more to it, I'm not opposed to that. But with $2,000 set aside from the ARPA funds, I don't think it would be the best um, usage of this particular legislation should it go past and program for us to have a $50,000 grant to be given to a particular um, household. That's just me because we don't have a million dollars worth of set aside funds. So hope I answered your question sort of. And I don't know, council president, I saw the mayor unmuted herself, so I'm not sure. Yeah, so I, more so I wanted to know, are these two separate programs and like would people be applying to both of them or you know, how would that work? But I'll let, I'll let the mayor go. Mayor Cross. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman Free, Councilwoman Guillaume. Um, this is a fantastic uh, resolution. I appreciate it. Uh, so this is, uh, thank you for acknowledging the email sent um, last month. What we do want to do is acknowledge for the ARPA money that we have an ability to actually um, support our community um, in covering rent, uh, in utility costs, in housing costs, um, as defined by the treasurer for the secretary uh, for the coverage of the ARPA monies. Up to 10% is allocated for housing stability services can be allocated and 15% can be used for other administrative costs. So this is something inside of the American Rescue Act uh, Plan Act that we could utilize that, um, you know, almost 5 million that we got to support our community in that way. Uh, I've already had a resident particularly reach out to me a couple of times about supporting with rent um, in a severe, uh, traumatic time as of right now um, and in you know potential risk of losing the home. So I'm very happy to, and encouraged to see this, but yes, I do believe we need to have a, another resolution that pulls money from the American Rescue Plan Act, um, which can actually address catching up um, utility payments that went behind because people didn't have a job, rent payments that were deferred because people didn't have jobs. And now we're having to take all of those costs. Come July, uh, many of those costs are gonna be required. So for allowing household providers, um, again, to apply for these funds, uh, even on, on behalf of the residents, if say if it's a rental payment, someone is renting from someone, they can actually apply on behalf of their renters who cannot afford to pay their rent payments. That's what I was asking for. And 50,000 may be a low number. I was just trying to be reasonable based on the fact that I've just only gotten a couple of inquiries. But if we can push 200,000 um, and then publicize this, I, I guarantee you, you're gonna find a lot of folks utilizing the services. Okay, so, last point I'll make one is, is I think it's two different programs. It just needs to be clear what the criteria are for each program and who can apply for, for what, but that's all. Thank you. Yeah. Councilwoman Jones. Uh, you're on mute, Councilwoman. You did. Okay, I'm sorry. So Councilwoman Guillaume, um, the program that you're trying to institute, I think it would require a project manager, somebody that would specifically zero in on this so that we would make sure that we would get uh, persons the homeowners that are eligible in your criteria for this particular um, program. So you do agree that it should have a project manager. Ab absolutely. I, um, and I stress this, um, and again, I, I have to say her name because she has been the bearer of my calls on Sunday evenings and Monday mornings when I'm like, look, I wanna make sure 
Um, what are the code enforcement violations? What are, you know, what are the, what's the population of those who are getting violated, et cetera, et cetera. And researching eligibility requirements and how this program would be managed in the first place. So looking at um, case studies and best practices, there's always been a project manager. So when, when Ms. Barber and I, when I, when I sent her a whole bunch of different things to look at, um, and Ms. Barber, you can say if I'm, if I'm um, exaggerating or not, we, um, I did not budge from the fact that whoever this ARPA person is, and that's one of, another reason why I want to stress, I want to say this, we need to get um, an announcement out if we haven't already to hire an ARPA fund project manager person because it cannot be done in-house the way we, are. these resolutions are great, but we need to, you know, have someone who can implement what we're trying to do. So yes, Councilwoman Jones, to answer your question, absolutely. Uh, thank you. And I, that's why I was in the beginning when we got the ARPA funds and they started talking about, especially when the um, council clerk uh, was, would make me apprised of different uh, uh, project managers that were ARPA uh, mm -hmm. identified, then we, we needed to get a, count, a, a, um, a fund man, a project manager at that time. But now that right. we're where we are, we need to definitely get on getting a manager for this uh, ARPA money. Right, and I can and I can already say, like, similar to um, months ago when when Councilwoman Fareed was was pushing, and we co and I believe it was Councilwoman Ferguson and I co-sponsored the Seventh Street Park project, and, and Councilwoman Fareed stated that there were um, she had already did some background research as far as funding opportunities. So I've already done the background research as to what this person will have to do. You know, of course, council would have to agree on it, but I basically done everything. So there's nothing for them to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm behind. And if I may, um, Council President, may I, I see Council, um, City Manager Barber is unmuted. So I don't know if she had something to add to, oh, okay. Okay. Um, I can't recall because I don't have it in front of me now, but is there a position in the the budget for a project manager currently? No, because um we had we haven't um come to council with that. Um I guess we came to you all early on with the project manager description and it sort of got dropped by the wayside because we were hoping that the um the yes, proctor. Um, yes proctor could do that but then i guess it became apparent that that was not going to happen so um it's not a problem we have the position description ready for you all um it just needs to be put in the budget okay all right any other uh, councilman jones so would that be put in the budget for the city's budget or for the opera funds budget it will go under the opera funds because that's available to um, cover that that cost um, associated with the management of those funds. Okay, so there shouldn't be any problem that, but then in uh, putting out a, um, a advertisement or, to get no. someone. Yeah. No. Okay. Right. Right. And I will say that cities nationwide have been doing that. They, they've taken um, funds out of the money given through ARPA to pay for this position. I have a question for clarity. So we designated ARPA as a revenue loss, um, just so that we could capture everything and then build programs under that. So with that, um, I know we'll still report it as an expense to the grant, but still wouldn't it be under the um, city budget given those terms? I don't think so because it's a it's a definite ending point in the position. It's a it's like a contract position, so it's only until the um, expiration of the ARPA funds because those funds do have to be expended by 2026. Still, no matter which way you chose to use them, whether you chose to use them under the original final rule or under the final final rule, and use them as revenue replacement. All right. Any other questions, concerns um, regarding this 
piece of legislation. Great piece of legislation, I should say. Thank you. And I, I, I do want to thank my colleagues, or all of you on this call. You know, as you, if it's not noticeable, I just usually say what I have to say and I'm done. So I, I appreciate the questions that were asked and I hope you can sense and feel my passion behind this. You know, I, I think we all are called to serve our citizens and there's various legislations that have come forth behind all of this. So thank you all for the amazing questions and th that you've asked and for Councilman Herring for offering, um, if you could find the name of the other program that we could not find, um, Thank you. Okay. All right, with that, um, that is all we have on the legislation for this work session. Uh, we'll move on to administrative reports. And as we have, I'm sorry, Councilman Ferguson, I'm sorry that I missed you. We give it a number. Ah, thank you, numbers. Councilman, uh, Councilwoman. Council Clerk, could you uh, provide a number, please? Sure thing. Um, uh, resolution number R50-2022 will be a resolution to establish a special fund known as the Glenarden Intergenerational Poverty Relief Fund to reduce the impact of economic hardship arising from the pandemic caused by the coronavirus in the city of Glenarden. Thank you, Council Clerk. All right, now we can move on to the administrative reports and as we've come accustomed to do in our work sessions, um, instead of uh, the presentation of the reports, which will happen at the regular session, uh, all of the reports have been provided to council members for reading. And so now we're just gonna open up for questions if you have any council women for read. Okay, I have a lot of questions. So deal with me. <laughs> okay. All right. So going through the mayor's report, I think we already kind of addressed the ARPA stuff, but I just wanna clarify. Um, May, of course, you're saying it's not 50000 to $200,000 per person. That's <clears throat> the total amount of the fund to be allocated to individuals who apply. That's correct, yeah. Councilwoman, not to exceed $200,000. Okay. And on the next item, um, where it talks about follow-up on actions necessary for traffic calming measures, ordinance on traffic regulation, what ordinance are we talking about? So the last conversation that we had with uh, Mr. Carrington and Senso Gat Census Gatos was that we needed a feedback on their successes in other communities. Um, so I believe that's what the council wanted. If I understand that correct, city manager, is that all we were waiting for? To push back the resolution for getting our traffic calming measures on place or in place. And I will state that we really, really need to get this in place. I don't know if you all are aware, but we had a tragically horrible accident there on MD202, as I was uh, Martin Luther King, literally right in front of the Municipal Center, car flipped over from having you know, an accident. The speeds are excessive. So we need someone to hold the speeding accountability and actually put the measures in place. So. We are really at this point pleading with you on getting someone in place. Uh, if they are not good, we can always relieve them. But um, I mean, th they're going to be accountable to help us collect these fees too and maybe slow the traffic down. But um, I don't, maybe Chief can tell us about it later. Okay, so you're saying you need an ordinance to, to reduce the speed limit? Well, we need to have uh, traffic common measures in place. Uh, and that includes um, actually getting a company that will hold those speeding limits accountability. As of right now, um, anyone speeding on say Glen Arden Parkway and you get a ticket by that little traffic camera, um, we don't really have a mechanism in place to assure that those come to payments. Um, so you can pay those or you don't have to pay right now. Um, what we need is a company that's really going to hold traffic violators' feet to the fire, and we 
that speed limit is 35. There's no reason why a car should be flipped over. And yet I'm consistently hearing from citizens that even on Glen Arden Parkway, cars are frequently found flipped over. Uh, it's just excessive speeds on these tiny roads. No, that makes sense. I'm just, again, it's just the wording of the ordinance versus the resolution. So I'm trying to figure out what, what ordinance you're looking for. It sounds like the speed limit reduction. Um, we can look into that as well. Forgive me. We can look into that as well, Councilwoman, um, as, a, as we take the traffic calming measures first. And if that doesn't resolve it, then yes, we should more than likely look into an ordinance. I mean, it's just a little small, uh, not even a mile strip, um, dropping it just to ensure as we get even to, um, um, you know, Frost community, that there is some speed reduction there as also as Councilman Harrison was mentioning earlier, hard for citizens to get out of their own uh, area. Right, and in terms of the traffic calming measures, I was um, emailing with Ms. Barbara this week about how we go about getting speed bumps, but then um, Councilman Herring made a point around the streets are public and if we feel like there's something that we need to do. So do we actually need to have petitions going in order to put speed bumps on streets or can we just determine that, that it's necessary and go ahead and put those speed bumps? Ma'am, we can determine what we want and put those speed bumps based on um, our traffic analysis, we can uh, utilize our police force, we can utilize our citizens, we can utilize the code enforcement, uh, we can even utilize, like I said, the traffic reports that come in. Um, we can put those in place. We don't have to have special permission. Right. And on that. That, on that point about the reports, where are those metrics? Where are the reports? I don't think the council has received any of that information. So there's the thing. There isn't any one mechanism collecting that. That's why I'm, I'm really asking the council to consider uh, Senso Gatsos, uh, Gatso, at least what we will have in them is a company that is actively watching and managing our traffic for us. And then we would be able to request those metrics. Right now, they're the company that's currently doing traffic calming for us, uh, essentially put the speed cameras up. They're not managing that. It's just speed cameras up and hopefully we get paid. We need something that's more involved. And, and this company is, it's really going to have that track record to get us what we need. You, you don't have those metrics compiled other than uh, police reporting. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to stop. So that's still uh, Ms. Uh, Councilwoman Jones is handing Councilwoman uh, Ferguson shaking her head. Councilwoman Jones. I'm sorry, you're on mute. My questions are for the city manager. I'm looking at her report and I just wanted some uh, status on the uh, RFPs, the one for the auditor, the one, well, the, we've already discussed the trash already. And the ones for the auditor, have we, the RFP for the auditor, have, has that gone out? You're on mute. Sorry about that. The um, RFP for the auditor has not gone out yet. I don't think um, we are waiting on um, just a few things from um, the treasurer to um, finalize that. And then that will go out. But it's, it's almost ready. It's okay. just a just a few things. And uh, the trash we are we've already discussed that and there, there was another RFP that was supposed oh the dias have we heard anything about uh, getting uh, work done for the dias I mean uh, uh, the council has discussed and citizens have discussed us coming back into the uh, city hall and holding our meetings but until we get something done with the dias downstairs. Um, right. So the dais um, is falling under the scope of the architect um, with the architectural and engineering professional services um, RFP that was put out because we would need an architect to design that. And um, those came in on May 27th. 
and they are a true RFP. So they all have to be looked at. Um, they do have prices associated with them, but the price is not the only, um, I guess, um, component that you would um, grade them on. So the staff is reviewing those proposals and I welcome if any of the council members want to um, review the proposals um, and, and give uh, their input on that, that certainly is welcome. Um, and we hope to have that finished by the end of next week. So that's an architect for not only the dyads, but other things in the city that require. Exactly, like um, Councilman Herring um, mentioned um, with the 7th Street Park, we do need to have a site plan for that. Um, if we were going to put more than one component on there, um, and even if you were only gonna put the, um, the playground on there, you would still wanna know exactly where that site plan would be. So that would come into play with the architectural um, services as well. So that, like I said, should be finished um, by end of next week. Okay. So, um, so that that it can be awarded in the next um, you know, meeting. Okay. Now the um, ADA compliance sidewalks for Lanham Construction. Uh, where is there a start date for them? We don't have a start date with them. We sent them the contract and they have not sent the contract back to us. We did reach out to them today and they said that they felt that the contract was a little, um, the word she used was confusing. So she was having a partner um, of Lanham Construction review the contract and um, said that she will get it back to us soon. Okay, and the MLK site, I thought we had everything ready to at least get started on. I know that that. Right. So you all have not approved the contract for all recreation. That I think is supposed to come up to um, approval next week. Okay. Um, with a regular meeting. Okay. All right. So and the, my last question is the um, refrigerator freeze. I saw an uh, email saying that you, you've been sh shot that back to the council to make a determination. But I mean. With the refrigerator freezer on the surplus list, uh, how long have we had it? 10 years? So you just look at the original price, do a, uh, 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 the uh, depreciation on it, and then come up with a price. I mean, why would that happen? Did the council, we don't well, need because to- Because I felt that that, I felt that that offer was um, really kind of low, even if you did depreciate it. I mean, that was an expensive um, piece of equipment. And I certainly can work with the treasurer on doing the depreciation and see where it comes up. But we did feel like it was um, uh, extraordinarily low. Okay, but in order to move the process along, like I said, just the, how much did we pay for it 10, 15 years ago, and then do a depreciation and figure out or, or Google it and see where it falls at. Uh, 2003 uh, Frigidaire freezer, commercial freezer, how much that would be now and 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 then come up with a price and yes, to, to get that, you know, moving. I, I don't think that's something that the council would have to make a decision on to get it. You know, we're trying to get those surplus items out of there so we can make room for whatever else we got coming in uh, to wait on the council for that. It's just, you know. Yes, ma'am. So. Okay, um, that's my questions. I had one more, but I can't, I gotta research that one before I bring that one. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, Chief Bryant. Uh, Good, evening. Good evening. Once again, welcome to the city of Glen Arden. Uh, thank you. Um, Ms. Jones, so b okay. before you start with Chief Bryant, um, uh, I think there was a disconnect. I, we thought that, well, at least I thought you had questions related to the uh, traffic calming measures. So oh, I'm sorry. We'll come back to you on that uh, and and allow Ms. Farid to finish and then I'll come to you next, okay? Okay, I didn't understand Ms. Farid. She was breaking up there, so. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and so just going back to the mayor's report, um, mayor, I, I see a lot of items here like on, point C, 
The mayor's office has supported field and 12 office calls meetings. I think these things are great, but what I'm not entirely clear on is what the distinction is between the events that you are participating in, you know, just because you're um, a service oriented person versus what are the events that you are doing as mayor of the city of Glen Arden and how those events relate to the city. So when we talk about, for example, the Mr. DC 2022 advisory committee meeting with Miss Virginia World over 60, Dr. Gloria Crossland, there's not enough information there for me to understand like how, why is that relevant for, for us? Is there any impact? Is there any action for the city or is it just you know an event, an event that you attended? And I kind of see that throughout and, and I've been noticing that in the reports and I just would want to ask that when you kind of list these events, if you could tell us how it's connected or what initiatives they're connected to that you're sponsoring, that would be really helpful. So you don't have to give me, because it's, it's a few that I have questions on, you don't have to tell me for every single one of them, but I think that that would be helpful and I'll just email you um separately because some of them seem like they're good and could be initiatives for our city but i don't i don't i don't know what they were um and then in the proclamation section it's just not clear also either what the proclamations were were for uh, and then on the um item i the street light installed bge off fulton street and it talks about their reports, um, people re making reports to Ms. Cheek. Do you have a report of all of those complaints? I think it would be really helpful for us to see those maybe as an addendum to this report on a monthly basis. We can kind of see what the concerns are so that we're not handling these um, these items as one-offs. If, there if there's a collective problem that needs to be addressed and we need to bring a consultant or something, that would be helpful to see that information. And, and that's really awesome. Thank you so much for that. And Ms. Michelle Cheek, this is actually her initiative. When I came on as mayor and um, I told her this was fantastic, we should continue this. So she has been collecting from every citizen that's called to report on, you name it, from a tree falling to my neighbor is running across my front yard, okay? So she's collecting this particular data, which helps us, as you stated, do uh, a heat map, essentially, of where problems may be um, percolating in the city from either aging trees or disturbances, civil disturbances, which will allow us to then ready our police or ready our code enforcement in the proper areas to kind of uh, protect the city and be more proactive versus reactive. So we can definitely pull her list and put that within the report under the administrative uh, portion. So thank you for that. And I think she'll be excited to hear that her labors is coming to uh, good work. Um, but on the uh, proclamations, I can put that clarity in there. We did have um, a death. And so, for example, uh, we did a life proclamation uh, for that one, uh, Ms. Armstrong. So we can do that. And uh, for um, Chief, Acting Chief Wayne Jackson, at the time, we, we will uh, bring forth a proclamation for him and his service to the city uh, during the uh, time that he was serving in that capacity. Um, we also bought to light. Oh, you mentioned DC, Mr. DC. So Mr. DC is something that is looking at young men um, for value of service, volunteerism, and it's growing really across the DMV. And we have a lot of young men in our community that could serve to benefit and be actually um, champions in this particular uh, committee. Uh, Mr. DC, um, Mayor Bowser, uh, myself, um, even I believe we're going to have a lot more DVs getting involved with this, takes young men uh, who normally uh, would not have an opportunity or a platform and allows them to speak. Um, Yasir Basir is Mr. DC 2022. He speaks on behalf of autism. So these are some of the things we will also have young men who will speak on behalf of the vulnerable community 
youth that may not have uh, family units that are whole. Uh, so that's one of the things that we're trying to do is to bring out people who are doing grassroots level work in our communities. Like for example, Mr. Roland Mincy working point with of, the youth. Point of order, uh, Mayor Cross. Mm -hmm. um, just wanted to, to uh, go, cause I know uh, that Councilwoman Fareed said that you didn't have to go through each one of them. Um, so to, to pass time along, if you could just follow up with her, your, uh, the question you have, you can email her or email the council since uh, I'm pretty sure other uh, members have the same concerns or questions uh, that would be helpful. But thank you. And Ms. Farid, are you done? I'm done with the mayor's report. I don't want to go through all my questions for the other reports in case anyone has questions on mayor's report. Okay, so let's let's do it by that then. Any other questions for the mayor's report? Uh, yes, uh, Councilman. No. Um, a quick question. Um, thank you, Council President. Pardon me, Councilman Herring. <laughs> okay, but um, quick question to the mayor. This street light, was it installed already? Uh, I, I, I saw this come up before couple of months back and the street light was like a nominal cost, but still it will cost us monthly to, for, uh, to provide that service. So this street light has already been installed and the council hasn't been given any uh, idea of what this is gonna cost the city. So the street light has been installed and honestly this street light will cost us less than a hundred dollars a year. Um, to provide safety for an environment that has sat in the dark literally for 35 years. And that, let the citizens tell it, that's how long they've been asking for something there in that light. Uh, with the amount of nefarious behavior that has been happening, picking up on the street, we took action to put the street light in, but we're talking um, less than $100 a year. Mm, um, mm. The monthly bill, I'd like to see the monthly bill when it comes in for that particular street light, because we do get a monthly bill for each. And I'm not saying that these citizens uh, should not have the protection of a street light, street lamp. This is the first I've ever heard that they've had an issue over there uh, where that is. But uh, I mean, uh, but I would like to see the because I know it, it would the, the cost to put in the street light was somewhere around uh, maybe less than three hundred dollars. But monthly, what are we paying monthly? for that service as the city of Glen Arden. So, thank you. Make sure we get you that. Thank you, Councilman Jones. Councilman Harry. Yeah, I just wanna follow up on the, on the speeding issue because I'm trying to figure out, I know that I heard about the car that flipped over today at 704 on Glen Arden Parkway. Um, and that seems to be the problem, problem spot. And we don't need a company to come in here to tell us that there's an issue there. What we need is the state to do something about it because that's the state highway. The company that the mayor is talking about, can they have absolutely no say on what goes on that, what we can do there, what we can't do there because it's state, it's state owned. It's up to us as, a, as, a, as an elected body to go in and reach out to the state highway administration, we reach out to the governor's office or whoever we need to reach out to, to get them to address that situation. Obviously we need either a left turn like there or something because what's happening is people are cutting in front of people going straight. And that's where the accidents are coming in at. And we, we went to the state before about that, that that's intersection there and they refusing to do anything about it. I guess, you know, it seems like in the black community, you gotta have at least three people killed before they decide to give you what you need. Um, that's where that's where we need to be starting at. This, this, uh, this contract is, what you call it, things can be addressed easily. My thing is, my citizens tell me where the speeding is. I don't need a company to tell me that there's somebody speeding on Polk Street, Grant Drive, Johnson Avenue, Glen Arm Parkway and elsewhere in the city. We know what it's speeding at. We just need to do something about it. So I think that's just a way to hold up the process. You know, we got a pilot, a speed bump pilot program in it. Let's utilize that. Uh, a speed bump pilot program that was um, sponsored by uh, me, Councilwoman Ferguson, and Councilman Harrison. You know, let's mo mobilize with that. You know, see what we can do to slow it down instead of waiting. We don't have to pay somebody thousands of dollars for a problem that we know exists and where we and we know where it exists. But for 704 and 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 Glenar Parkway. That's the state, and you. We got to petition the state over and over again. We really got to stay on them, and basically embarrass them into giving us what we need at that intersection. Because if, if, if I mean, it's, it's, if cars are flying, cars are trying to beat the light again. Like I say, the the ones that's going straight from Glen Parkway, going straight across 704 towards the town hall, 
And the ones that's coming from the town hall, making that left hand turn, they're turning right in front of cars. So, I mean, that's what we need to be looking at. Because, I, like, again, sitting here, we don't need to pass a contract to, to, to solve that problem. That's just a simple phone call down to the state. So, thank you, Councilman. Uh, thank you, no. Councilman Harry. I, I had a, a follow up question uh, on that as it relates to the um, traffic calling measures, because I think I know we're about to go anywhere, Mayor. Uh, but with uh, Ruby Lockhart Road, I know that Captain Jackson, when he was acting as chief, he highlighted that as a uh, place where he wanted one of the cameras uh, from the company that you, you were talking about. Um, and I know that uh, the Woodmore community hasn't been turned over yet, but if that's true, then has Ruby Lockhart, has that been turned over or do we have any, uh, okay. You're muted, can you? No, no, it hasn't. So we're looking at January 2023. And I just want to make sure I'm clear. Um, since OGATS isn't charging the city anything, it will get all of its money off of the fines that will come in from violators. So I just want to make sure I clear that point up. We are not going to charge, they're not charging us thousands of dollars. But what they are going to do is put help us put a plan in place and be a responsible agent to actually collect on those fees. That's what's hurting us right now. Again, someone can speed up and down Glen Arden Parkway. They never pay the bill. We can't send the police to go and pick them up. There's no process in place for that. But with this particular company, they have given us the reports and I have, we are looking for, I guess, the success stories from other areas. That's the only thing that I don't know if we have it uh, to the council yet. And I will follow up with the uh, city manager, but we are in need in the city of someone to manage that piece for us. And those cameras, where we want to put them, it will be on the city council, it will be on the citizens. We will put them where we want them. They can be moved at any time. Uh, we can even put them in our police cars. Um, the cameras can be placed in trees. I mean, the, what we're gonna get for nothing is a whole bunch of something. And for us, the cost is leveraged back to the violator, essentially. Um, so definitely Ruby Lockhart can be done. Whitmore isn't going to transfer over until uh, first quarter 2023. So we still have some time to take care of that. Councilman Herring, yeah. you talked about the speed bumps, the humps, I mean. We can also utilize that program as well and do an incorporative. But as of right now, I, I highly recommend it. Again, if it doesn't work out, it's just as simple as saying thanks for the service is not going to work. Thank you, Mayor Cross. Any other questions for the mayor's report? Okay, uh, then we will go to the city manager's report. Any questions for the city manager's report? Mr. President. Councilman Harry. Yeah, I just, I was looking, I'm, I'm just getting rid of this question since it's all under her. And this is just for the, for the gold room, the gold room report, I, I think it's lacking. I mean, it's not giving us any information. Um, the last report at least had dollar amounts on it, what we earned for the month. And that's not on this one. Um, I mean, it says six scheduled events. What type of events were they? Um, I would like to get all that information. Uh, the three scheduled gold room events projected. I'd like to get all that information and a dollar amount associated with each with each event. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, and, we, and before we move on uh, to that, Mr. Heron, and I, I truly apologize. I keep on forgetting. Um, I took um, something off the agenda uh, because Mr. Heron and I worked it out, but it was the keys to the. Um, the ballots. Um, the last time we talked about that, I know we were, I was talking to the city manager about it, but I do have the keys now, so I will <laughs> finally give them to you. Um, so just a heads up on that, but um, Councilman Harry and I already discussed that as a, it's not a council issue, but um, the election board has turned over those keys. So 
Um, with that, was uh, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Fareed. Yes, um, this is on the city manager's report. Um, Ms. Barbara, I think it would just be helpful if to have to have a little bit more context in what you're putting on the report. So like it says, met with citizens, but it would be helpful to know like what you met with the citizens about. Um, just so we kind of have some context or like worked on three, RF three RFPs and posted a newspaper online and on a state website. The RFPs, like what are they for? You, it uh, says you wrote along with code enforcement and what, were there any findings from that? And if you review the bi-weekly reports, what, you know, what reports are those? I think it would just be more helpful to have some context and action items on the report. And I don't know that we necessarily need to know like that you answer emails or that you approve check requests or things like that. Okay. Uh, any other questions for the city manager? Okay, we'll move on to treasurer's report. Any questions on the treasurer's report? Okay, not hearing none. Last report is the chief of police report. Any questions for the chief on this report? Councilwoman Jones. Um, I'll send him an email. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Councilwoman Jones. You're welcome. Uh, Councilwoman Fareed. Now in a chief report, but you said that was the last report. Just there's more reports. Are we not gonna go? Should I have addressed the public works report with the city manager? Yeah, yeah I well, yeah, all of the, I mean, if you have questions, I'll definitely accept them, but um, I was lumping all those reports under her. Oh, got um, it. So, so I do have a question on that because, you know, we've been getting a lot of complaints from residents about the state of the city and, and how it's looking. And so I think it would be helpful, Ms. Barber, if we could get a map of the city with the areas that are maintained by public works and the frequency of which that's done. And if there are any common areas that are not the responsibility of the city, it would be helpful to know who is responsible for that. Like, is it the HOA? Is it the county? So that when there are complaints about how things look, we know who to go to or when it's gonna be resolved. Um, I think that that for me is the biggest thing. I, we don't have a schedule. We don't know when public works is, you know, it says they continue to cut grass throughout the city, but how often are they doing that and picking up litter throughout the city? Someone posted it on Facebook the other day, Campus Way. There was just like a pile of garbage in the middle of the street. Not sure whose responsibility that is. Is that public works or is that? It would be. Yeah, it would be. And yeah. typically we get a call if there's something like that that's in the roadway. Um, but Yeah, so it would just be helpful to, to have a map of the city and knowing who's responsible for what. Okay. and how often that's being maintained. Thank sure. you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. With that, that is uh, all that we have on this agenda. Hold on, did we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have the chief of police report now, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but no one had questions um, unless I missed it. And chief, I'm sorry. Um, so in the past, there was a re, uh, report. Uh, you would give a presentation at the work session and then give the same presentation at the regular session. So to cut out the double presentations, uh, we just give all the reports to council members just for a read ahead. If they have questions, then we can address them directly with department heads at the work session. And then your official presentation will be at the regular session. Um, I know this is, um, is this your first work session? Yes, um, just real quick, I'd like to make just a couple of comments. I know we're running behind, but um, we had a couple of concerns in the community, but 
before we do that, um, the traffic calming measures, um, the mayor and uh, council member Heron brought up some real good points in reference to traffic calming measures. Um, we need to utilize every everything we can to try to um, ascertain and get information for our community. Um, but like council member Heron said, um, strength come in numbers. You got to keep pressing the state. Um, that would be you, you guys working together and strength come in numbers and just keep pressing them so they can come on these state highways and do what they need to do. And in reference to what the mayor said, if we got a company coming in that can help us out and we don't have to pay them just to give us intel to help make us a better community like other communities, that'd be great too. So anything we can utilize to help us out as a city would be great. Um, also, in addition, um, I like to talk about the, um, the mass shootings we've been having across the country. Um, over this weekend, we had 13 mass shootings um, and 17 kill over 200 so far this year and uh, just, just half of the year so far in June. So some of the things we've been doing in, um, in Glen Arden City is um, make sure that we're visible in the areas. Um, and I also got several calls from um, citizens about the officers being um, at the shopping center, being visible in the shopping center. Um, if you remember the Buffalo shooting incident, that particular individual, he staked that place out several times. And if you look at the video, not at one time did you see a police vehicle in the area. They just had a security guard who was stationed working off duty, who was a retired officer. Um, but if you notice in our shopping center, um, you see the police moving around, you see police working off duty at these locations um, with vehicles uh, clearly marked in front of these locations as a preventive measure. Um, also, um, just before the school shooting, um, the mayor, the city manager, myself, Captain Jackson, the lieutenant, and the officers, um, we've been going to the elementary schools prior to the shooting for different events, career days. Um, they had career day, um, field day, and everything else like that. But um, we were making our presence known. And I think a couple of days later, we had the school shooting. And we've been having officers posted at the schools um, before and after, just um, you know, giving them an assurance um, that we're there for them and uh, updating them, updating the principal and the teachers and stuff on the things we're doing to try to make our community safe. So those are some of the things we're doing. and. Um, we, we appreciate the support from uh, everybody and working together as a team. That's all I have. Thank you, Chief Bryant. Really appreciate all the work that you and your officers do for uh, the city. Uh, Mr. President, man. All right, Councilman Harry. Yeah, uh, Chief, I just want to thank you for the uh, cookout. It was yes, a sir. great event. I really enjoyed myself. It was great sitting with my seniors. I ain't sat with them in a while, you know, because of COVID. And, uh, you know, they wanted to meet everybody and they enjoyed meeting you. Um, I know they're going to hold you to task, you know, yes, <laughs> um, so, but I'm going to just say this, if you ever need anything for an event that you're having, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I mean, I, I don't, I'm going to speak for the other council members, but I'm sure they wouldn't mind assisting with it either. Cause I know, you know, you were kind of short on funds, but I have no problem. If you ever need anything, just, just reach out to me. I'd be <laughs> more happy to assist you with, with whatever you need. I appreciate everybody. Um, Everybody been very helpful. Uh, everybody I reached out to on the council, um, especially the mayor and the city manager. Um, and I, I like to give a shout out to uh, Department of Public Works. Um, Howard Taylor and his team, man, they've been outstanding with setting up, taking down, working before and after hours. Um, so I really appreciate everybody and working with everyone. So um, if anybody actually, if anybody had any pictures that they took with the seniors, because I didn't get a chance to take pictures with the seniors, if you can forward them to us so I can get them to Monet, Ms. Ward, you know, we can take care of everything. And um, I'd like to give a special shout out to our vice president too, Ms. Ferguson. Um, She's been working with me, uh, especially with certain things in the community. Uh, the latest thing we work on today was trying to get uh, that apartment, um, I think it's Glen Reed Apartments. Glen Harden. Yeah. We nah. trying to yeah, we're trying to get a um trying to get them to write a letter to give us access to the property to um to to do some enforcement for them. They'll have to give us something to write and for us to actually because it's private property. And uh so we're working on that now. And uh, we're trying to, you know, any one of your wards, we have any issues or concerns, just um 
reach out to me and uh, me, the captain, the lieutenant. Uh, we, we get with the officers and we try to make everything work out. But it's a lot of things I'm still learning. And um, like I said, I'm very happy and excited about it. And several citizens have reached out on a regular basis. So we're working some things out. So thanks again, everybody. Appreciate you. Thank you, uh, Chief Bryant. Councilman Jones. I have just one uh, observation that I made. I guess this will be for the city manager because it's on the public works is um, report. Uh, permission to purchase a work laptop. Why would they need a, a, a laptop? Is that under the um, projected goals for the public projected works? Projected goals, right. They haven't actually done that. Oh. I mean, it, but they do have a desktop and, I, and I'm sure with the, just like the, uh, they have their on their phone. Don't they have an email on their phone? They do. Okay, so yeah. and the need for a laptop is... Yeah, I'm not sure why they would need a laptop. I'd have to talk with Mr. Taylor about that. Um, but it, it hasn't come to fruition as of this point. All right, thank you. Yeah, and just one quick, um, two quick things for Ms. Farid. I tried to direct messenger. I was mistaken. Campus Way is not um, City of Glen Arden. That's the Woodmore um, HOA. And the grass cutting schedule is online. I um, It's... Um, Kind of hidden, but it is on the website um, of the grass cutting schedule for the week, um, for, for the, each day of the week when they cut. So I, I did send that out by um, link and I can put it in the chat for everyone if you'd like to have that. Great, thank you so much. And is that, does, is there also a map of the city that goes with that or does it say where they're cutting the grass at? It says like specifically where they're cutting the grass. Okay, thank you. And one of the questions relates to the Department of Public Works. I, I, I know that they're working in really poor conditions as relates to the office areas. Um, is that, and I, maybe we can take this out when the budget come up, but is that being addressed? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, the working conditions. The, I've been to the Department of Public Works. Uh, the ceiling is caving in. Um, it's really poor conditions that they're trying to work in. Uh, in an office setting when they're in the office. Um, what's yeah, been done we are working we are working on getting that up to spec for them. Okay. Yeah. All right. We we had several contractors come in and um um yes, we are working on that though. Was that for the water in the garage or for their office area? The water in the garage. Oh, okay. Council President and, and City Manager Barber, I'm not sure, I would have to look again, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, the Public Works Office that can be, or, or Public Works Space, ARPA, um, ARPA's final rule states that we can um, utilize funding for that as well, but I can double check. I'll know by first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, with that, uh, I'm sorry, Council Jones, did you have anything else? Uh, Councilwoman Guillaume, if, can I impose on you as you're looking for that, can you mm -hmm. also look to see if the ARPA funds can be used to gut out that uh, nutrition center in the council chambers and the two bathrooms down there so that we can mm -hmm. upgrade those for um, better facility use? I can. Thank I can, you. For sure. Okay. Um, with that, uh, and, and Chief, I do want to say that, and I guess it was Councilman Ferguson and uh, Councilman Jones, that my son truly enjoyed the the barnyard pimp. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so it was a great event that you had on Sunday. I'm oh, sorry, on Saturday. Um, you would have thought he never had barnyard pimp before. Uh, <laughs> and for people uh, like me who did not know what barnyard pimp was until uh, two days ago, that's just chicken. <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, the time is 9.43 and this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.